Chapter 8.3, Preparing a Post-Closing Trial Balance. So now what we've done is we've gone through our entire process and we have journalized the transaction, we've posted the transaction, we've recorded the um, information on a worksheet, created our financial statements, adjusted entries, and post-closing. Now what we need, I'm sorry, and our closing entries, now we need to prepare our post-closing trial balance. And what a post-closing trial balance is, is basically just to make sure that our debits still equal our credits, and it's also a check and balance to make sure that our assets still equal our liabilities plus owner's equity. Our permanent accounts, the ones that were not closed. So we're going to put prepare it and once again we do who, in this case it's Len Laundry again, we what, it's post closing trial balance, and when, April 30th. So all we're going to do is we're going to take the information from our ledger and we're going to be transferring it over. You will see on the post closing trial balance there is a debit and credit side, a little different from when our uh, balance sheet and the income statement would where they didn't have them, post closing trial balance does it because we want to make sure that our assets equal our liabilities plus owner's equity and our debits equal our credit. So all we're going to do is we're going to take the information on our permanent accounts. How do we know they're permanent accounts? Well, basically they're going to be the accounts that still have balances in their ledgers. In a short, short, uh, shorter version, they're going to be your ass, most of your asset accounts, uh, your liability accounts, and most, and, and then your owner's equity, your capital account will have it. Because remember, we closed everything else last, last one. So, if it doesn't have an account, we don't post it. If it, I'm sorry, if it doesn't have an account balance, we don't post it. So, and we start in a numerical order with, the, uh, so 110 will do cash as a debit of 76. We're just going to transfer it. Our accounts receivable, Natasha Goodlin has a 700 debit balance. Our accounts receivable, our Henry is going to have a 498. Our supplies is going to have a balance of 431. And I'm just recording the last number in the balance column. So uh, my prepaid insurance has a balance of 200. Uh, and then I'm going to record my liabilities. Well, my accounts payable, Tri-County Supplies, has a credit balance of 381. My accounts payable, West End Supply, has a credit balance of 555. Then I'm going to record my credit balance in my letter long capital of 8500 and I'm going to add up the debit column and add up the credit column. Write the word totals. 9436 is my credit debit column total and 9436 is my credit column total. They need to equal, they should equal. If they don't, you have to go back and check because you've done something wrong. Probably in your adjusting entries, uh, you recorded it wrong, either not subtracting or not adding and whatnot there. So since they do equal, we put a double line under that because that verifies that the information is accurate. And 